All right, Dr. Hines back here again. I'm gonna get quite mathy with you, and uh, we're gonna calculate uh, some of the line spectra that we see with the uh, hydrogen. So what I have up on the board is called the Rydberg equation. And the thing to remember is that you've seen, you've seen the hydrogen lamp, but if you take that light and you separate it into the individual color components, uh, you'll see what we call line spectra. And what Rydberg was able to figure out is that these electrons are jumping from one energy level to another energy level. And in this Rydberg equation, he's got these two parameters. I've, I've got them labeled N low and N highest. So this represents the two energy levels that an electron is jumping from one level to another. Also in his equation, he's got the Rydberg constant, so that's just a numerical value. And the the, the color of the line, every color that you see has a numerical quantity associated with that, a wavelength in nanometers. So what I'm about to show you is I'm about to show you uh, calculating a value for a wavelength as an electron is moving from a highest energy level to a lowest energy level. And also part of this we're talking about uh, it falls within the visible part of the spectra, things that we can see with our eye. So what I'm gonna focus on is I'm gonna focus on moving from, I'm gonna have an electron in a higher energy level, so I'll just label this N highest, and I'm gonna put it in energy level three of the hydrogen atom. And so this electron's in this highest, highest energy level, and it doesn't like to stay in this high energy level. It likes to drop back down to a lower energy level. So I'm gonna have it jump from the highest level of three down to energy level two. So it's gonna jump from this high level down to that high level. And basically we're gonna calculate what color, essentially what wavelength, what color photon that's gonna produce. So I'll plug this value in for the highest energy level and you'll see that it's squared, and I'll take this value right here and I'll plug it in for the lowest energy value, and you'll see that it's squared. And along with that, I'll plug in the value of the Rydberg constant, and then we'll be able to calculate the wavelength of light from that. So here's what the setup of the equation is gonna look like. And this is kind of tricky right here. Some of y'all get a little bit confused with this little reciprocals business over here, but we're gonna kind of look at a little bit of the algebra on how to solve for just the wavelength, not one over the wavelength. Okay, the value of the Rydberg constant, okay, that's very well known. It has a value of 1.097 times 10 to the seventh, and it's got a unit of one over meter, okay? Now you can imagine that wavelength is in units of meter, and our constant has units of one over meter, okay? Now, plugging in the rest of the formula right here, we'll have one over the lowest energy level, which is a two, but it needs to be squared. So I'll put the two in there, and I'll square it. And then you've got the highest energy level right here, which we're gonna plug in a high value of a three. So I'm gonna have one over three squared. So I've got all the numbers plugged in there. Got my right power of 10, correct power of 10. I can do all this math right here and I'm gonna end up with a one over wavelength value. And then in the last algebraic step, we'll have to actually calculate what just the wavelength part is. So I've kind of got it already worked out over here on the side. And um, I'm just going to basically rewrite the value of the constant. And I don't know, get a little bit mathy with you. I mean, you guys should be able to tell me what 2 squared is, okay? That's a 4. What is the decimal equivalent of 1 fourth? Okay, that's something that you should have already known in your math class. One-fourth is equal to 
0.25. Okay? All right. The other one might be a little bit more tricky, but 3 squared, please tell me that you know that that's 9. Okay? What is the decimal equivalent of 1 ninth? I'm going to crawl out on a limb here. I, I used to have these memorized here. I think it might be, I think it might be 0.111. I'm going to look on my little cheat sheet right here, and guess what? I got it right. So 1 ninth is equal to 0.111, and it's just a repeating decimal, okay? All right, so I've got that kind of calculated a little bit more for you. Now I would need to subtract these two from each other and then multiply it by that. So I'm gonna kind of cut down here towards the bottom. And so I get one over wavelength is equal to 1.53, nope, sorry, my bad, two, two, three, six times 10 to the sixth power Seems about right, because when I subtract these two, I know it's going to give me around 0.1-ish, and 0.1 times that is going to give me about a tenth of six. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. All right. So this is equal to 1 over the wavelength. What would you do on your calculator? What would you do algebraically to solve for wavelength itself? Some people talk about cross-multiplying, this, that, and the other. On, the, on your calculator, you probably have a 1 over x function on there. And so I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going to any more detail, okay? You, you need to be able to use your algebra to solve for what the wavelength is right here, okay? All right, when all is said and done, the wavelength turns out to be, I get a value of about 600, um, I'm going to call it 6.56 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, and that sounds about right because I know that I'm going to have a 1 over 10 to the 6th power. One small little conversion we can do with this right here is that um, we've got it in the SI unit of meter, but oftentimes when we talk about visible light, often we'll, talk, we'll use nanometers to talk about the different colors of visible light. So what you would need to do is you would need to convert this into nanometers, which I'm not going to show you how to do that. You should be able to do that. If you do it correctly, if you change this into nanometers, you should get about 656 nanometers. Okay? So when an electron jumps from energy level 3 to energy level 2, it produces a photon, okay, it's got to release that energy. That photon happens to fall within the visible spectrum, and that photon happens to have 656 nanometers, which I believe, if you look on your chart, um, you should have already done this, but on your chart, you should already have these nanometer values, you should have a color associated with each of those. And here I've just calculated 656 is the wavelength of that photon. I wonder what that color would be. Should I show you? Should I not show you? I'll be a, I'll be a nice guy here. It's actually in your lab report. Okay. So I calculated 656. Well, that is pretty darn close to being a red photon. And so you're going to apply the Rydberg equation. Uh, let's see, where do we... Uh, okay, yeah, I'm trying to figure out where we're going to do this. So right here in this column right here, you're going to calculate the different wavelengths of the spectra of the hydrogen, and we'll kind of explain that in more detail. But this was just kind of the math exercise on how you would finally arrive at the wavelength and the color that way.